with 13 grand and a trip or two to Greece and becoming the first champion of this star-studded field, a lot is on the line. But your audience, the engine that makes this thing go, are the sweet nectar that we appreciate like fine old wine. So with that, guys and gals and pals, let's bring in our first celebrity judge, guys and gals. So welcome the mega-talented, humble, intelligent friend, first name Jacques, last name Rougeau, Mr. Rougeau. Welcome to the new year, my friend. <laughs> I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I feel like I'm on a pedestal right now. So put your hands together for a dear friend and human being. Last name Pickett, first name Cindy. Welcome, Cindy, my friend. Happy New Year. Oh, you are so wonderful. Happy New Year to you. I am so grateful for our friendship. The great Cindy Pickett, guys and gals. And of course, now it is time to bring in our three participants who are amazing human beings. I think of the word champions because all three participants tonight are just that. So put your hands together for a classy, kind human being. First name, Brittany. Last name, Reese. Welcome, my friend, to the Celebrity Tournament. Hey, Abby, how you doing? Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I am too, my friend. Brittany Reese, you are the champion of all champions. And again, I think we all win. It sounds corny, but we're all going to win because we're going to have stimulating conversations, learn about each other, uh, which is really the goal here. But at the end of the day, you're a competitor. You want to win this whole thing. Am I right? Yeah, I'm trying to go to Greece. You want to go to Greece? I want to go to Greece. Put your hands together for a beautiful, positive, genius of a human being. First name, Julie. Last name, Brown. Welcome, Julie Brown. <laughs> Thank you, Avi. That was mind-blowing. That was like, did that happen? Was that my life? I mean, you, you don't walk around thinking about that stuff about yourself, but that was just like reliving it. That was amazing. But uh, hey, five-day trip to Greece, 13 grand. Are you here to win this whole thing as well? I'm here to win the whole thing. I have my clothes ready to go. I'm, I got a hat. I'm ready. So let's welcome in the one and only, last name Kerrigan, first name Nancy. Nancy, welcome, my friend, to the tournament. Hey, Abby. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here. I mean... I mean, that was that was definitely something special. Boy, you went far back and and covered a little bit of everything, which is amazing. Julie Brown will kick things off. Uh, Julie, if you could select one person at any point in your life that was there to support you when you needed it most, who would it be and why? The person would be Charlie Coffey, who became my writing partner in acting school. Because before I got to acting school, both of my parents said, well, the, you can't be an actor. They both said, yeah, can't happen. You can't be an actor. You can do anything but that. And so I, I kind of had that in my head. Then I got into this really cool acting school and I met Charlie. Charlie was there to make me feel like I could do it. And I think the support system is such a big deal because you sort of feel like you're crazy sure. if you come up with something you want to do. And, you know, it's easy to talk yourself out of it. But that's not who he was. He was pretty amazing. My dad was always there for me. He was just always, um, well, my mom couldn't drive because she was blind. So he would drive me to places. He took my skates. Um, I, for a while, I must have driven him crazy because I liked how my figure skates, we did figures way back then. And I liked how they were sharpened at a place about a half hour that direction. And the free skates, I liked them sharpened at a different place over there. And so he was driving all over the place for me. Um, I can remember in college saying, like, Dad, if we had show and tell now, I would bring you because you could fix anything. It was so tough when he passed because I thought, ooh, he's my safety net. Like I could call him for anything. Um, and so he was just always there to help someone. We heard people, it was like a seven hour straight um, procession for his wake that people just kept coming and saying, I haven't seen your dad since I was like 12 years old, but he had this impact on me or all these amazing stories that were so fun to hear that we never knew. We thought, geez, no wonder you were gone. So we used to wonder what, where did he go? He went to the grocery store and he's gone so long, but apparently he was visiting and fixing things for people. And even more important, like a, such a role model that I, it's a lot to live up to, to be that good. And that like giving to other people all the time, but it just made me so aware of like, what kind of a person I would want to be. One person always remained true. And that was my mom. Um, she was a single parent, um, worked FedEx. We lived, um, we lived with her, but in the morning, around six o'clock in the morning, we would be at my great grandmother's house. 
and we'll go from school there and then we'll go um, back to her and then my grandpa will take us to whatever practice that we had. And if I had a game, my mom would um, have one of her coworkers help her with her packages so she could get off early so she could watch my game. And I feel like I was put in this position um, in order to be Olympic medalist, in order to uh, be able to travel the world just so she can be able to travel the world and see those things also. She's the reason why there is a Brittany Reese and the, the reason why I am the Olympic gold man today. My vote's going to go to Nancy because I, uh, not because of you were better than the others, but just because for me, my hero was my dad. And then, you know, so when you were talking about your dad, it came and got me more because my dad is my hero. But Nancy, I related more to you then because my father is, uh, he was everything to me. And uh, my dad and mom, I put them at the Algonquin and I said, and I had them, he came down first to have breakfast with me. And he said, he had never actually said, I, I know I've never told you this, but I'm so proud of you. And I was just bawling, you know, and I said, why haven't you ever told me? He said, oh, I'm just to have a hard time with that. But he was my, he was my hero my whole life. And uh, so I, I really do understand. Uh, and uh, I agree with you that that was my most important person in my life. If you can let us know which scene in a film, in a television show, on a radio broadcast that produced the greatest laugh out loud moment that you've ever experienced, please, my friend, the floor is yours. This is really hard. Um, laughter is important because you know when you see athletes like listening to their earphones and they're like jamming out and getting ready and getting psyched. I could never do that. I listened to, um, I had these CDs, so it's going way back because we had CDs. And listen to WPLJ Radio did, um, what were they called? Uh, like prank calls. They would call people up. And it was so funny. I would laugh so hard. And like these, all these, um, I was listening to that right before going out to compete. And all these reporters were like, what is she listening to, to my coach? And he's like, I actually have no idea. So he would listen to it. And then you can just picture him now in this big head. And he's like crying, he's laughing so hard. Listening to just comedy and laughter kept everything loose for me. So I was like ready to go and compete. But if if you're gonna make me pick for a film or a movie, I think I would definitely pick Elf because I will watch it year after year after year. And like, it continues to make me laugh out loud. It came with Mrs. Doubtfire. And, <laughs> and uh, I just, me and my sister love that movie. To, like we played that that tape out and uh, rest in peace to Robin Williams, but he is hilarious. Um, and I think the fa our favorite part was when um, the the boyfriend came in and and she put and he actually put the the cake in his face to because he was trying to be inconspicuous because of um, he was being that the fake nanny uh, for his to, so he could get to see his kids. Um, that movie is hilarious. Uh, one of the best one of his best movies to date for me. And I thought about the um, food poisoning scene in Bridesmaids. Oh. When they're in the work, they're in the, <laughs> the bridal shop and they've had this really bad lunch. And um, Melissa McCarthy starts grabbing her stomach and then she farts, and they all like are sweating <laughs> and they're all so funny. Then they go in the bathroom and they're throwing up on mm -hmm. each other. I mean, yeah. oh my God. And then Maya Rudolph goes in the street in the wedding dress. I, I was screaming when I was watching that. So, uh, I mean, there's so many funny scenes. There's so many funny scenes in movies, but I think that was unbelievable to me. Uh, Brittany Reese, the question I have for you is if you could make a documentary about anything, what would you make it about? And I had to just say myself um, because I have, a, I have a unique story. Um, I have a story that I think that should be shared with um, young girls. Um, some of the things that I went through as far as in life in general, uh, some of the things that I went through sport wise, injuries, um, mental, mental illness, um, all types of things like that sport wise. I feel that if I was to get my story out and have a documentary, I'll be able to reach young athletes, young girls um, that are up and coming in different sports that are up and coming in life. Um, 
which is which leads me to why I'm a high school track coach to this day is a way of the of me giving back. So um, if I was to write a documentary, it definitely would be about myself and how I got to to being this uh, seven time world champion, uh, three time Olympic medalist. Um, it's a unique story. I think it should be shared. Julie Browns, your question is: What specific experience in life taught you something that you have been thinking about lately? In November, my dog that I had for 16 years died. And I got her when my son was about to go away to school because I thought, well, I won't have a baby. So she was this little white dog and she became my my baby. And I had her for 16 years. And when she died, it was like, it just like you, everything can fall away. So I've been thinking about my dog so much. And what does that mean to me? This thing that I love is just gone. So it's put everything in more focus. Like you love something, you love a person, you have to go for it. And then Nancy Kerrigan, your question is what value guides your decision making? I think number one, empathy. We never know what someone else is going through. We never know. We are all definitely stronger than we think. I mean, you look around, you look at people that are going through cancer or something challenging or loss of a job and you think how are they doing it how can they do this but we're all stronger than we think we are and just to find beauty around us laughter and beauty because it is literally everywhere whether it's artwork or people and their their emotions their feelings and just have you know i think that's the main thing and as you say like you know, I, I just always wanted to be a mom from the time I was little. And they time goes so fast, they just grow up and they keep leaving. So I'm like trying to be it's as you were saying, yeah. be present and be in the moment because it just keeps going. And um a little scary the older I get, how much faster it's all going. But uh yeah, so be being mindful, I think is is really important. And I think that's pretty cool to see that like even though you've all succeeded, you've all completely you know, out eclipsed and reached this mountaintop of success. I love seeing how you guys always stay grounded. And I think that's the one thing that I love about the the celebrities that we have here that are a part of this tournament. I, I've turned some people down. There are people I've written for. There are people who've won their Oscars and Emmys. But the fact that the three of you, I just got such a good vibe just by conversing with you and getting to know you briefly. And then here tonight, like my mind is blown. But 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 long story short is I appreciate it so much to get to know you three girls tonight. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Nancy again. Brittany, I have to say, when you wow. chose yourself for your documentary, I thought that was really special. Yeah. Because we all have a story, mm -hmm. and I think everyone should write their story or do a documentary on their story because we all have a story. And anyway, I thought that was pretty profound that you chose yourself for making a documentary. So uh, I, I want to give this one to you. Moving on to round number two with 31 votes will be Nancy Kerrigan and tied with 23 are Julie Brown and Brittany Reese, who will also <laughs> be moving on in a few months to round number two. We have not had many ties as he saw in the intro, <laughs> but all three incredible participants, human beings, talents have moved on to the second round of this tournament.